Hi there, I'm Spencer. You're watching Moto Scout. But you already knew that because you know how to read. Hopefully. So I traded in a 2020 Triumph Street Scrambler for this 2021 Honda Rebel 300. Now you might be asking yourself, why? Why, Spencer? Why would you do that? Why in God's name would you do such a thing? Some might even call it blasphemous, and I'd be inclined to agree. However, a couple months back, my wife decided she wanted to learn how to ride a motorcycle. So we went and picked her up a street scrambler from Southbound Motorsports in Lakewood, Washington, uh, which is an incredible motorcycle. It's lightweight for a motorcycle of its size and uh, really easy to learn on. It's a great beginner bike. Uh, but there's one fatal design flaw that we didn't really realize when we bought it Which is that the shift lever is attached directly to the shift shaft. So while I was trying to teach her how to Get the bike going by adding throttle and letting out the clutch and doing all that fun stuff uh, She was she kept stalling it, you know, of course as people do and the bike is pretty it's not super tall but it's pretty tall especially for somebody of her size she's pretty short statured um, and it's still a 900 cc bike so it's still heavy uh, for somebody who's small and, and not super strong um, so she would stall the bike and then she would you know try to put her feet down and she would lose her balance um, and most of the time she would catch it uh, but you know you, you get that uh, you know, skip, you know, you put your foot down, the weight starts to kind of like, you don't get under it enough and the weight starts to kind of like push you over and, and that would happen to her. And she dropped it on the right side of the bike and the only thing that happened was she broke the brake lever, uh, no big deal. But then we were sitting out front of our house uh, trying to get the clutch down and adding throttle and uh, she stalled it, lost her balance and uh, dropped the bike. Uh, on the left side, which is the side where the shift lever is. So, you know, I ran over to her. She, she basically just set it down, right? She kind of did that whole like slow motion falling over. And uh, so I ran over, picked it up. There didn't seem to be any damage whatsoever. Started it up, tried to put it in gear and nothing happened. Just dead shifter. And it was stuck in neutral. Thank God. Uh, so, and thank God we were right out front of our house. So I went to southbound. Uh, and talked to them about it, did a little bit of research online and found out that this is a pretty common problem with the street scramblers because the design is old school. It's a modern retro, so the design is much like how they, it used to be, but it just kind of seems silly. Like, who, who's gonna notice that? I'm just gonna ride around in circles. I love this section of road. So this is funny, this place right here, apparently there was like a homeless dude living in the attic and they didn't know for like a long time and then the health department shut him down. Liquid theater, that's really cool. Anyway, so apparently this is a super common problem with the street scramblers. So naturally, you know, it's gonna cost like $2,000 to fix it. You gotta get a new shift shaft, which is like unobtainium at the moment. Um, and so, you know, naturally my wife was terrified to get back on the bike uh, because, you know, she didn't want to have to pay $2,000 every time she dropped it on the left side of the bike, which is going to happen. You know, she's a new rider. She's small. The bike is heavy, you know, for her. And, you know, she's going to be probably dropping it. And God forbid she's sitting at a stoplight or something in the middle of nowhere and she, uh, she drops it. She's stuck. What is she gonna do? You know, she's gonna call a tow truck, turns into a whole ordeal just because she set the bike down. It seems so ridiculous. And it's something that I think Triumph really needs to address because the Scrambler 1200s have the same lever design. Like that's a bike that's toted to be one of the most off-road capable Scramblers on the market. And all you have to do is set it down on the left side of the bike and it's rendered completely inoperable. That seems so ridiculous. It's such an easy fix. My my Speed Twin has a totally different shift design, shifter design, and it's still a modern retro. I didn't even notice. Nobody will notice. It's not that big of a deal. Why? Why? It seems so, so ridiculous. Anyway, rant is over. So basically, we went back to Southbound. I told them what was going on. Apparently, it happened. The same thing happened to the owner's wife. 
uh, she dropped it in their garage and the same thing happened. So he was super upset. He called his Triumph rep and had parts out immediately, which is like, if you've ever tried to buy Triumph parts, you know, is like calling a favor from the gods. So the parts arrived in about a week, which is super cool. Um, and we, we, I had to tow the bike in uh, and they agreed to fix it. Um, but we, Michelle decided that she wanted to trade in the bike because she was terrified of trying to ride it again, which I, I can't blame her, you know? That's, that's an expensive fix on a bike that's supposed to be learner friendly. And it's such a vulnerable part. So uh, she's always liked the Rebels and they had this 300 there uh, when, we were, when we brought it in to get it fixed. So I talked to the guys and uh, we decided that we were just gonna trade it in. We pretty much, you know, it's a $10,000, $11,000 bike versus a $5,000 bike. So it's not, it's, it's not comparable, right? But this is a much more, uh, you know, obviously in retrospect, this is a far better bike to learn on uh, for her. And for people who have never sat on a motorcycle in their lives, this is, a great bike to learn on. It's super bare bones, stripped down. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just aimlessly wandering. Uh, I just really like that section, but it's not super pleasant on this bike, but we're gonna keep doing it because who cares? Anyway, so, you know, she sat on the bike. She likes the way it looks. I mean, they're, they're awesome looking bikes. The whole line is super rad. Um, and it's just stripped down, bare bones, nothing to it, motorcycle to learn on. And there's, I mean, it's totally gutless. It's a 300cc motorcycle. So, you know, at the end of the day, it broke my heart because I, I'm a Triumph fan and I love the Street Scramblers. I think they're awesome bikes, um, but they're definitely not, I would say because of that one design flaw, they're definitely not super great beginner bikes because beginners drop their bikes. It happens, it's, it happens to everybody. If you've met somebody that says that they've never dropped their bike, while they were learning to ride, they're lying to you, 100%. Um, especially small people, because bikes, motorcycles are heavy. So there's no way that you haven't dropped your bike. And that is a super vulnerable part. So it seems so silly. Wow, this is awkward. This is how light this bike is. I'm on a grade, I don't know if you can tell from the video but that's probably, you know, 15, 20 degrees. And I can easily muscle this thing around. I mean, this bike is, it's a super rad bike, it, but it's, there's nothing to it. It's a 300cc motorcycle. I'm cruising in sixth gear at 40 miles an hour. And I can, there's, it's, I mean, the motor's working, right? My bike would be bogging at this speed. I mean, these are, this, these are the same bikes that they have at motorcycle safety courses uh, for you to learn how to ride on. So, I mean, it only makes sense um, that she ride one of these. I mean, they're, they're awesome. She looks really cool on it. So that's half the battle, right? Is looking cool. And she also, I mean, there's not, it's really hard to do anything wrong on this bike because there's nothing to it. There's no rider aids. There's, I mean, you have gear, you have your gear indicator time, speed, miles, and fuel. That's it. You don't even have a tachometer. And it's completely gutless. And, and it's supposed to be, right? It's a 300cc motorcycle. So it's really good for people who are just starting out. You know, you're not, whiskey throttle, that's, I'm pinned at fourth gear. Nothing happens. I mean, it's like perfect for somebody who is just learning. Um, the clutch is super light. The brakes leave quite a bit to be desired and so does the suspension. I'm sure you can hear my voice bouncing around. This road is not that rough, but I mean, there's just, it's, you know, it's a cruiser, not great suspension. I'm sure I'm a little heavy for this bike, uh, but I'm 5'9". I'm com very comfortable seating position. My arms are relaxed, my legs are relaxed. Uh, I don't feel like my legs are too, too uh, tucked up and the foot pegs are pushed way out. Uh, so the foot controls are really easy to access. That was one thing with the street scrambler where, you know, they tuck the foot controls into the frame a little bit. So the, the foot brake was a little bit hard to get to and the shifter was a little awkward. 
um, especially if you're wearing bigger, like actual riding boots and not like shoes. But the suspension was awesome on those things and it's a higher ride height. But this, you know, it's a cruiser, so you sit quite a bit lower. Um, I can flat foot this easily, so can my wife, Michelle. Um, and it's super, super, super lightweight, like shockingly light. Uh, because it's such a small motor and it's a there's no fairings it's just a stripped down naked cruiser um, and there's no bells and whistles you know you don't have cruise control you don't have anything it's just lights horn indicators mirrors emergency lights and startup that's it it's easy to understand easy I mean easier than something like a crew an actual cruiser that has like it pays your taxes and wipes your ass for you. The one thing I will say about this bike is it feels really front light, like back end heavy. So like when I'm hitting these bumps, I feel like I'm, my front end's bouncing around quite a bit. But you know, that's no big deal. It's, you should learn how to ride on it. The great part about these, this series of the Rebels is that, you know, you start on the 300 and you outgrow it as she probably will pretty quickly. And uh, you move on to the 500, which is the exact same bike with a bigger motor. So you get a little bit more power. You get more, a little. You might get some rider aids, maybe a little bit better suspension. And these are really easy to sell because everybody that's starting out with motorcycles wants one of these. So they're really easy to sell. Then, once you're done with your 500 and you want, you're ready to move up to something a little bit better. Then you move up to the 1100, which is comparable to other. Uh, thousand cc motorcycles in its class. I mean, it's, a, it's an awesome bike and they're cheap. So they're cheap to fix, they're cheap to maintain. They're easy to fix, like Triumphs. You break a Triumph, you're gonna have a hard time finding parts, getting parts, and they're expensive to fix. Hondas are not, and they run forever. They're low maintenance bikes, which is awesome for a new rider because when you're trying to learn how to not die on the road, the last thing you want to worry about is your oil or your chain or whatever. So it's worked out great. And I can't sing enough praise for Southbound Motorsports. They handled the situation really well. Uh, super impressed. That's where I bought my Speed Twin. Um, and I will continue to buy motorcycles and accessories from them. Everything just worked out really well. So I will say, that I'm not sure how much content I'll be doing around this bike because, you know, for me, coming from a 1200cc bike to this thing, don't you f***ing do it. <laughs> uh, gotta love it. But if you're looking into one of these, which is probably why you clicked on this video, um, I will say that probably the only reason anybody should buy one of these is if they've never ridden a motorcycle before. Um, you you will have a hard time keeping it at speed on the freeway uh, or anything above 65 70 miles an hour this bike will be working really hard to keep up um, but beyond that uh, it's you, you don't have enough power to get yourself into trouble you know it's easy to understand the bike it's easy to ride it um, but if you are, if you have some riding experience or so, like say you rode dirt bikes when you were younger and you have some semblance of how to ride a motorcycle, I would recommend the 500 because this thing is completely gutless. Um, and that's the point so that you can't get yourself in trouble when you're just trying to learn how to operate a motorcycle. Um, so it's great for that. But if you have some understanding of how to uh, operate a motorcycle, you will get bored of this really fast and end up in the 500 or the 1100 anyway. So you might as well just start at the 500 because it's still not enough power to really get yourself in too much trouble, but it's enough bike to grow into once you have kind of gotten your feet underneath you uh, after maybe not riding for a really long time or whatever. I love this lake, it's so pretty. On a clear day, you can see Rainier over there. Super rad. To kind of sum it up, uh, this bike is really cool. It's perfect for beginners. The suspension is not great, the brakes. I'm trying really hard not to compare it to my Speed Twin because they're not even close to the same leak. I mean, they, they are not 
comparable in any way, shape, or form. The Speed Twin is a work of art. It is a finely tuned machine that has been refined over decades of the Bonneville line. It's, it's not even close, but the Speed Twin is not a beginner bike. It is a legacy bike. This is a beginner bike through and through. I mean, you're basically, it's giving you the striptest, the stripped down bare bones version of a motorcycle so that you can learn without spending a load of money. I mean, MSRP on these things is like 4,500 bucks. The great part about it is most of the time in those, in that price bracket and this amount of power on a motorcycle, you get a very ugly or squid looking motorcycle. This is a very attractive motorcycle. It looks really cool. Beyond that, I mean, the seat is comfortable. The riding position is very comfortable. You get a very nice HID front headlight, which is more than I can say for the Triumphs. You get enough, right? And the best part about it is that it's super lightweight, which makes the learning experience much easier. If you're looking to get into one of these as a beginner bike and you are just trying to learn how to ride, it's perfect for that because you'll look cool and it's easy to learn on. So I 100% recommend it. And again, I can't give enough uh, praise to Southbound Motorsports for how they handled the situation and how awesome they were through the whole thing. If you're in the Tacoma, Lakewood, Seattle area, uh, I very much recommend them as a Honda Triumph dealer. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure uh, how much content I'm going to be making around this bike because uh, for me this is it's a nice put around town kind of bike but it's not something that I'm going to take on any long rides or anything like that and my wife would probably kill me if I did anyways um, so uh, but I'll do some she wants to like mod it out a little bit and stuff like that so I'll probably end up doing a couple installs and things like that on it um, definitely need to figure out a mirror solution for this and these grips are they need to go there's no bar ends so i'm not sure what i'm going to do about mirrors um, but i'm sure there's plenty of solutions out there by now definitely want to do a tail tidy uh, she already has a quad lock that i gotta install so there'll be some content around this so um by all means stick around uh, if you have any questions or anything like that make sure you drop them in the comments i'll do my best to respond all 200 of you are really gonna overwhelm me i'm sure so anyway that's enough rambling for today uh thanks for hanging out i hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one